So if you've been brought up on cars that are fuel injected and have computer controlled mapping and everything else like that, you may kind of be wondering, well, how does a carburetor on an older engine actually function? Um, and I'm just going to spend a little bit of time taking you through the basics of how a carburetor functions. I'm going to use this partially disassembled um, Solex twin choke carburetor that I've got here in order to do that. This is not a lesson in how this particular carb works or how to tune it, but it's just using it as a general um, kind of model on the basic principles of uh, actually how these things manage to keep a car running under a wide variety of, of conditions. So let's take a little look at this and, and the main kind of parts that make it up. <clears throat> You quite frequently hear guys in the Ford world and everything like that, or in fact, almost any kind of um, part of the car world talking about putting twin choke carburetors on engines. And uh, we will spend a little bit of time in, in other videos actually looking at why you can't just grab a, a carb off the shelf or off any old engine and stick it on any other old engine and actually have it work straight out of the box. But how does this lump of metal actually make your car run okay so first of all what does an engine need to run well it needs air and it needs fuel and this supplies both and it's going to need to supply fuel under a wide variety of running conditions so if you think about it your engine really has three main running conditions it has the idle so very, very low revolutions, no opening of the throttle. It has wide open throttle and it has a position somewhere in the middle, which is kind of where it's at most of the time. You also have conditions whereby you're going to snap the throttle open. So you go straight to wide open throttle and it's going to need to be able to respond in order to actually do that. <clears throat> So what are the main parts that make it up? Well, first of all, you will have a fuel inlet. Um, in this particular case, the fuel inlet is up here, but its position could vary. Now, I'm just going to take the top off here to see, well, as the fuel goes in and that's pumped in by your fuel pump, either your mechanical fuel pump or your electronic fuel pump, where does it actually go? So it will go into what is known as a float chamber. Now, in this particular case, we have a float chamber here and it's called a float chamber because in it is a float okay this particular design has two plastic floats often they will be single brass and they will sit in there and the purpose of that float <clears throat> is to control the fuel level in the fuel bowl inside the float chamber because what you want to have is you want to have a consistent level in there so that the carburetor always has uh, enough fuel to draw from um, in order to fuel your engine but what you don't want is your um, fuel pump which is pumping continuously if it's an electronic one or it's pumping continuously if it's a, um, a mechanical one driven by the engine you don't want that to fill this completely up and to sort of flood the engine and pour fuel out everywhere so what you have on the top plate of your carburetor is you have a needle valve so this valve here when the needle is open it allows fuel through when the needle shuts it stops the fuel from flowing through and the position of that needle valve is controlled by this float so as the fuel level rises the float raises up and it closes that needle valve it then cuts off the fuel flow into the bowl and your level remains constant till such time as the uh, the engine obviously draws fuel out fuel level drops needle valve opens fuel comes back in again so we'll just chuck that back on there for a minute because we'll take that bit off um, again to have a little look later on so what are the other parts of the carburetor and how does it get the fuel from there into the engine uh, mounted on the engine side you have your throttle plates okay so as you put your foot down see these butterfly valves will open 
you take your foot off these butterfly valves will close <clears throat> that's important because that's what draws more fuel more air into your engine raises the revs gives you the power etc all the sorts of things that you actually want um, <clears throat> the main body of the carb is effectively a tube that runs from your air filter down to your throttle plate so there they are they are there is a tube that runs all the way through there that tube is known as a venturi or rather it works on a venturi principle and a venturi is simply a tube with a slightly narrowing diameter in the center as air is drawn in it speeds up as it passes through the slightly narrower part and there are orifices in there which I'll, we'll look at in a minute um, that allow the fuel to come through now how this actually functions is the faster the air flows across that venturi it creates a vacuum the vacuum causes the fuel to be sucked in to be atomized and ultimately to make its way past these throttle plates and into the engine so that's your basic principle you you open your throttle your engine is running it's an air pump sucks air through here the pressure difference creates a vacuum or the air speed creates a vacuum sucks the fuel in which on its own is not going to be or rather uncontrolled is not going to be a very clever way of, of, of getting um, the right amount of fuel at any given time so let's think about some of these conditions I mentioned so you have your idle condition now your idle condition is usually when your throttle plates are closed now I mentioned that the air is not going to be flowing past here if these throttle plates are closed so how are you actually going to get any form of um, airflow any form of fuel flow I should say well what you've actually got in here is you've got an idle circuit which is made up of a couple of um, different parts there is a bypass valve um, which will be somewhere in there. It's an air bypass which actually allows the air to flow past the throttle plates here you have an idle jet which we'll look at in a moment and then you have idle control needles here now these could do one of two things they could either control the airflow like in these or they can control the fuel flow like in some of the uh, uh, other types of, uh, of carburetors that you might actually have but in conjunction with one another what they actually do is they allow the fuel that is in this fuel bowl here to be drawn up through the idle circuit and here is an example of uh, an idle jet that controls the amount of fuel that is able to be drawn through that circuit at any given time screw that back in there and then you have this air screw here which is effectively a mixture screw so you screw that out you allow more airflow screw that which leans the mixture down and again tighten it in allows it to uh, to richen up and so what happens is that the fuel there comes out of this well you can't really see it particularly well but there's a hole in there where that fuel uh, comes out that's your idle circuit that's when your throttle is closed now the idle circuit the name is a bit of a misnomer because it's not just for idling okay actually the idle circuit is used most of the time as you open your throttle slowly so you're slowly accelerating you reach a point relatively quickly actually where your idle circuit on its own cannot supply enough fuel so you have a progression circuit in here and the progression circuit is in this particular carburetor there are three holes just down below this needle there which as you open the throttle plate they become revealed one by one and that is your 
progression circuit. It's a transition, if you like, between idle and wide open throttle. And it's designed so that when you slowly accelerate, you know, your, your um, engine doesn't have, or your carburetor, I should say, doesn't have to move immediately from the idle circuit to the main circuit. You don't get any stumbling, you don't get anything like that. You've got this progression. Different carburetors have it set up in different ways. It's very similar in one of your Weber 40s, 45s, DCOE type um, carburetors. There are carburetors that don't have it. Um, so there's a large number of Webers that are kind of designed for like racing where you don't tend to um, to worry about a progression circuit you idle or you've got a wide open throttle um, kind of situation and they're not particularly nice for street use but you do see them on, on, on race cars without that. What this doesn't have is a traditional air choke because a, a carburetor like this has an accelerator pump. Now what an accelerator pump looks like is this down here and if I was to take out the float there is actually in the bottom here there's an accelerator pump valve and the purpose of doing this is that if you are sitting and you suddenly jam your throttle open well the fuel that is brought into the engine via the vacuum is not going to be brought in fast enough so what that vacuum what that accelerator pump does is it simply squirts an additional jet of fuel directly from the fuel bowl directly into the inlet manifold and prevents your engine from suddenly going lean and from stumbling under wide open throttle and that's really its entire purpose it doesn't actually do um, anything else so the accelerator pump is simply for that moment when you jam your foot on the throttle go from an idle condition or a slow running condition um, a low speed condition straight to a wide open throttle condition so that you don't stumble eventually the, the main jet uh, and the main circuit will catch up so we then have the main circuit. Now you'll know it's actually on this because this is a twin choke or a twin barrel carburetor. There's two of everything, so there's two idle jets and then there are two emulsion tubes here. Um, now this particular carburetor has one main jet down the bottom that feeds both of these um, idle, uh, of these air emulsion tubes. And this particular circuit is known as the main circuit. And this is used when, well, it's used differently depending on the load that the engine is under, so the, uh, the revs, the throttle position and stuff like that. And what makes the tuning of carburetors a little bit of a, a black art, I suppose, and something that people don't really understand, is you can look at a, a fuel injection throttle map and you can see a progression in there, you can see or you know at such and such a rev and such and such a throttle opening we're going to need this amount of fuel and stuff like that. Well how do you do that mechanically just simply using airflow characteristics and vacuum? The, the way that they, are, that they do it is using these things which are air emulsion tubes and this effectively does two things. At, the, at one end is your main jet which is a larger jet than your idle jet i.e. it flows more fuel through and you have here this is an air bleed valve or an air speed valve at the top and in the middle you have an emulsion tube which is a series of holes in that particular uh, brass tube and the entire purpose of this is depending on the difference between the atmospheric air pressure and the the vacuum caused here it will suck up fuel from down below air from the top and it will create an emulsion so an emulsion is droplets of fuel in this particular case suspended in a gas um, emulsion does also mean droplets of liquid suspended in another liquid but in this particular case it's gas uh, with fuel droplets suspended in it it creates that emulsion and then that is fed in via 
what are known as the secondary venturis, which are these in the centre. And you can see each of these has a little fuel tube coming out of it. And that's where your fuel comes from your main circuit. And the amount that is flowed through there depends very much on, as I say, two things. It depends very much on the throttle position. It also depends on the um, revs. Okay, so throttle position and revs. And between those three uh, sections, the idle circuit, the progression circuit, which as I say is really just an extension of the idle circuit, there's not really a progression circuit per se, and the main circuit, you get a uh, carburetor that will deliver fuel under most um, road conditions. The accelerator pump just adds versatility to that because it means that you don't get a lean condition as you open the throttle. So when you build a car or you specify um, a carburetor for a particular engine, you need to know a number of things about the engine that you are going to be building it for. You need to know the number of cylinders, you need to know the size, you need to know the rev range. And from that, you can calculate the size of the Venturi that you need. You can calculate the size of the idle jets, and you can calculate the size of the main jets and the type of emulsion circuit, the type of emulsion tubes that you are going to need. You can set your fuel float level. You don't want to put the biggest carburetor on that you possibly can get. If you stick a huge carburetor with a huge Venturi onto a small engine, it will be pumping very little air in comparison to the size of the Venturi and you will end up with a very low um, speed of airflow. You will draw not much fuel in there so people will then overcompensate by putting in larger jets and then they just get really bad running and really bad fuel um, uh, miles per gallon and fuel uh, usage from them. So that's how a carburetor works. That's how one of these lumps here, or almost any type of carburetor, um, actually works in order to ensure that your engine runs as best it can under as many different conditions as it might kind of come across in everyday use. Well, just duck down there and say hopefully you found that relatively educational admittedly filmed in one shot and not actually edited at all so um again please like please subscribe please leave me any comments if you've learned anything new or if you think i've completely misunderstood physics and nothing i know about engines is is valid in the least till the next time take care